The year, 1978. Grease was in the movie theater, gas was 63 cents, and Lori Corbelli, then Lori Flockmeyer, was just a college kid at Texas Lutheran receiving a call to join Team USA. In 78, they said, if you don't come now for the 80 games, you're gonna miss the boat. I jumped on it and went and met, and met up with the team and that started training and that's how I, I got started in 1978. Under the leadership of legendary coach Ari Sullinger, the team decided that if they wanted to win gold, they needed to keep up with foreign teams that were practicing full time. You know, we quit school, we were required to quit college, quit jobs. All of us moved to Colorado Springs to the training center and we were the first team to open the training center in 1978, March and we all moved into the barracks. It used to be an army base, so we moved into barracks. We trained in an old um, auto repair shop uh, garage that they turned it into a gym, a small gym, and we trained every day for eight hours. As tough as an eight hour training session would be, a family atmosphere and a motto from Sister Sledge kept this team together. We are family. You start to just become family and that in fact was our big song Sister Sledge was we are family and we we just were we weren't about to as, as in the middle of a difficult drill someone's in tears can't go anymore and you think why am I doing this you know you just look around and your teammates are right there supporting you it was just the ultimate in team experience and we didn't want to let each other down but when 1980 does finally arrive so does bad news for this volleyball family. Neither the American people nor I will support sending an Olympic team to Moscow. Well, I'll never forget it because we were on a tr uh, local tour, a, a um, domestic tour, and we were landing in San Antonio. And when we stepped off the plane, I'm from Texas, so all of my family had driven from Dallas to San Antonio to see the team and to see us play. And when I got off the plane and walked into the terminal, my family was all standing there all in tears. And I knew right then that we weren't going. Not only does this team not get the chance to play for Olympic gold, but soon after the team has to decide what to do for the next Olympics. Seven players from that 1980 squad decided to leave, and seven, including Corbelli, decided to stay, dedicating themselves for four more years only because they knew they would compete. Had the Olympics in 84 not been in America, I'm not sure I would have trusted the fact that we would have been allowed to compete again. We had trained and represented the U.S. in so many competitions already that if the U.S. was going to send a team, it needed to be us because we were the team that was ready to go. So the quest for an Olympic gold has to start all over again. This time, the team moves to Los Angeles. They train in the same place as the games. Coach Selinger works the players even harder than he did for the games in 1980. We slept at the gym. We trained now about 12 hours a day. He, got a, he started hearing that the Japanese were training three times a day, so he moved our training into three times a day. And when the 1984 games finally arrive, it was obvious the hard work was going to pay off. We entered the stadium and the place just started, it felt like an earthquake, a Southern California earthquake. It shook. It was 90,000 Americans basically cheering when the USA finally came in. This is the moment I've been waiting for. And just the pride you feel for being an American, wearing USA, having your sisters around you, it, it's something that's so hard to describe. The team did not win gold, but it did end up with a silver. Corbelli says that after spending so much time working toward that Olympic final, silver was not such a bad thing. It really wasn't about the winning and the losing. It wasn't about gold, silver, bronze. It was about the seven years of training, the, the travel, the, the pushing yourself beyond the limits that you ever thought you could do. Now, 32 years later, Corbelli is coaching kids at A&M that weren't even born when she made her Olympic run, but it is still a teaching lesson she uses today. I challenge my players to go beyond. and. It's certainly not impossible, but I think sometimes we just they just limit themselves so much with what they think they can and can't do. And I have to be the one to say, no, you absolutely can do this. I did it. I saw people all around me do it. You can do it.